Greenville won the toss. They deferred to the second half. The kickoff to the Paladins in their own end zone, and they will bring it out. First play of the 2022 season. It's a really nice one for the Paladins. They get it up all the way to the 27-yard line. That was Wayne Anderson Jr. with the football for firm. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of Wayne Anderson today. I mean, one of the fastest players, if not the fastest player on the, on the Paladins team. We're going to see him a lot in the slot as he made that change to receiver during the offseason. Paladins debuting their black uniforms and purple helmets, and they're sweet, Cole. I'm they a, look really nice. I'm a little jealous, to be honest with you, Mark. I mean, why, why couldn't we have the nice things when I was playing, man? <laughs> Jeez. Huff with the handoff. Allen is going to pick up a few right up the middle, and Dominic Roberto gets his first carry of the season. And Dominic Roberto is a heck of a player. I mean, a guy that took over after Devin Wynn went down in about the middle of the season last year, and he just had a stellar performance. I mean, over 600 yards rushing. It's just astronomical numbers. Paladins move it quickly. Roberto again is going to pick up the first down, get over the 40-yard line, and the Paladin rushing attack coming out strong. See Roberto, number eight, the redshirt junior. 5'11", 231. Packing some punch. Yeah, the coach said he had, he had lost a little weight, and he's a lot leaner. First pass of the season for the Paladins. That'll be complete up near midfield. And Ryan Miller, big surprise, gets his first catch of the 2022 campaign. Yeah, we're going to see that connection happen a lot. I know the new offense coordinator for the Paladins, he's looking to get Ryan Miller more involved in his offense. He knows how great of a player he is. So we're going to see Ryan Miller get much more involved than he was in past seasons. Yeah, Justin Roper, the new offensive coordinator and quarterback's coach for the Paladins. He comes from Holy Cross. And he obviously likes to get the plays in quickly. That's going to be very close to a first down for Furman. Jaden Clayton, middle linebacker, picks up the stop and, boy, a couple of feet short maybe of the first down. Not too far. Maybe uh, let's call it less than one. So the first third down of the season for the Paladins. And up the middle. And where they spotted, he's picked up the first down, and you saw Kwame Livingston among the tacklers for the Crusaders. Take a look at the starting lineup for the Paladins. Again, Tyler Huff, the grad student transfer under center for the Paladins. At Roberto and then Harris, Anderson, Shiflet, and Miller, the skill positions. And the Paladins have something very special, too, about on, on that offensive line. They have a preseason All-American at number 67, Anderson Tomlin. Oh, good run. And they also have... Another tackle, number 75, Pearson Toomey, who's also a first-team preseason all not preseason All-American yet, but preseason All-Conference player. Really good run there by Anderson on the misdirection. He took his time, let the blocks get out there in front of him, picked up another first down for Furman. Pass down the middle, Ryan Miller, touchdown. We'll be saying that a lot this season for the Furman Paladins, and they strike quickly to take the 6-0 lead. That's what you like to see. No pressure. Pocket was just beautiful. Textbook pocket. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better pocket from the offensive line right here. I mean, no pressure in his face. Tyler Huff delivers a beautiful ball. Ryan Miller kind of goes up the seam, and oh my goodness, easy touchdown. Paladins are already up now 6-0 on their first drive. Well, that's exactly what you want to see if you're a Paladin fan. That's the 17th career touchdown for Ryan Miller. That moves him into fourth place all alone in receiving touchdowns in Furman history. Extra point is up and through. And Furman's first drive of the season results in a touchdown and extra point. They have a seven-point lead. Crusaders will get the football coming up. Tyler Huff to Ryan Miller for the touchdown. Doesn't get a whole lot better than that. No, it doesn't. I, I know Paladin fans are excited to see that. That's something Coach Hendricks wanted to see from his quarterbacks. He wanted to see consistency, and that's the reason why Tyler Huff is the starting quarterback tonight because that's something that he exhibited throughout the preseason camp. So the Paladins gets the 2022 campaign underway the exact way that they'd like to. Ian Williams, the transfer kicker from NC State, with the kickoff. North Greenville touches the ball for the first time. Won't get it back to the 20-yard line, so nice kickoff coverage for the Paladins. 
The Crusaders will take over there first and 10. Stout defense for the Paladins. Travis Blackshear, defensive back, all Southern Conference. Got some great linebackers play and some big boys up front as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, this this might be one of the better Paladin defenses in, in a memory in a long time. I mean, you just look at what they're built, how they're built, and how they, fast they can play and how hard they can hit. I mean, you got a lot of great football players, especially on that front seven. Bryce Fields, you saw the stats on him. Played in seven games last season. The grad student quarterback gets his first snap of the year. Quick throw out in the flats. Paladins are all over that one. Shut it down quickly. Crusaders pick up a couple of yards. And that's Doug Washington with the catch. Crusaders are going quick. Oh, yeah. And that, I know Bryce McCormick just made the play, and the play's coming up, but you're going to see a lot of him just swarming to the ball. He's very good on his pursuits. Nice little run pass option. Crusaders are going to be up close to a first down. It was Cameron Walker this time, so Fields faked the handoff. Got the ball out to Walker. I feel like we're going to hear that name a lot today. Actually, they're going to move the chains. That's a first down for the Crusaders, so a nice start for them on offense. Mm -hmm. Brad Robbins, the offensive coordinator for North Greenville. It's got to feel good to get the first couple of plays of the season under your belt. Oh, yeah, especially when you have had limited playing time or not as many plays underneath your belt and throwing the ball, and now you kind of come out slinging. Fields under pressure. Didn't throw that one away. Was looking for his target, but couldn't connect. The Paladins defensive line making some noise. And I know Coach Hendricks is happy about that. That's something he wanted to see. You see the starting lineup for North Greenville. Fields under center. E.J. Humphrey, the running back. Washington, Funny, and Walker. Got all kinds of puns when Funny touches the ball. I've been saving them up, man. It's like a play-by-play -play guy's dream when you get a name like that. Oh, man, you should have heard me about Michael Jackson for VMI last year. Oh, bro. my gosh. Yes, I would have had a lot of fun with that. Another quick hitter out in the flat. It's going to be third and long. Guess what? Tyree Funny with the catch. There we go. I got to save him. I don't know how many times he's going to touch the ball. I'll save him for later. You got to save him, man. Just have him just locked and loaded and ready to shoot, man. So third down and about seven to go. So the first third and long that either team has faced. We'll see if the Paladins are going to bring some pressure here. Running right back goes in motion. Five receivers for Fields. Back to pass. Goes deep. Don't see any flags. And the Crusaders will be facing fourth down. Looks like they'll be punting the football. Yeah, it looks like the quarterback kind of just overthrew the ball. A little miscommunication on the route, possibly. There's really good man covers on the field. And right as you can see, it's about to be punt time for the Crusaders and punt return time for the Paladins. And so let's see, can they build on something on their special teams with the new addition, Tommy Spangler? So Miles Prosser to kick the football for North Greenville. He's a grad student. Callie Chiswick back for the Paladins. Nice kick. Chiswick's got to run backwards. Ooh, that's beautiful. Catches it about the 11-yard line. Has some room to run. Has some blockers as well. Tries to turn the corner. Gets it up over the 25-yard line. So a nice little punt return. It'll be decent field position for the Paladins as they get ready for their second drive of the first quarter. Paladin's on Paladin brand, band bringing the noise. And they should be. Paladin's on top, 7-0. Cole, first drive of the season is out of the way. You score on the first drive. Preseason jitter's gone at this point? Uh, pretty much. It's kind of like when you ask a girl out the first time. You know, you're a little nervous. You don't know <laughs> what to expect. And she might reject you. But whenever she says yes, hey, you're feeling great. So that's exactly what it feels like when you score a touchdown on the first drive of the series, of the game, really. Yeah, no jitters at all for the Paladins. They pick up a quick first down. That was uh, Anderson. You see Huff's statistics from last year. Did a great job at Presbyterian. Another run for the Paladins off the left side, and they are just carving up the Crusaders' defense at this point. That was Devin Abrams. And this is good for the Paladin offense right here. Go ahead and establish a run game very early. Make Tyler Huff make his job a lot easier, and that way you can build up on the passing game. And as you can see, it worked really well for him in that first series. I mean, 
Ryan Miller wide open down the seams for a touchdown. They would run the ball a couple of times and then find some open receivers. You've got second and one. You can have some fun with this. And uh, Huff's going to have some fun keeping himself off the left side. Turns the corner. Big pickup into Crusader territory. Oh, that was a great run. And that's something that Coach Roper wanted to do early when he came here. He wanted to be able to have athletic quarterbacks. And he has that with Tyler Huff and Jace Wilson. But as you can see, great quarterback keeper right there. And Tyler Huff is a pretty good athlete. I mean, he's, he's not a slow guy, not a traditional pocket passer, but he can move. Uh, they, I don't know if they changed the snap count or had a little bit of miscommunication, but looks like it's going to be motion on the Paladins. Fast start. Offense. Number 32. They got Abrams on that. Yeah, he's going to get pulled out for that one. I mean, that's something as a, as a former player you hate when you have false starts. It's just that bad feeling of, ah, oh, there's five yards on me. But, you know, you know that you feel like your team's going to get that back, and the way the Palins have been moving on offense, I feel like they will get that back. Huff back to pass. Boy, almost a disastrous play there. That was Dontavian Bird coming from his linebacker position, jumping that route. Oh, that was dangerous Ooh. right there because now had he been a, a step faster, we, it might be a tie game right now. So Huff will be glad he got away with that one. It'll be second and 15. Paladins at the 41-yard line. Huff back to pass. All day. All kinds of time. Throws one down the left side line. Good play defensively by the Crusaders again. That's a couple of really nice plays. That was Miles Betts knocking that one down. And that's what you like to see. Even though this is a Division I opponent, the Crusaders are not laying down. They don't care if Furman's D1. They're ready to go. That was a very good pass. But if not for that defensive play. Would have been a big game. So third and 15 now for the Paladins. Huff. There's one out in the flats. Pick up about six to the 35-yard line. It's going to be decision time now for Clay Hendricks. I think right now they may want to just see what they have and maybe kick the field goal. I mean, you, I feel like you have a guy that you've been bragging about with the transfer from NC State. He has such a great leg on him, and that's what it looks like they're going to do. They're going to go kick the field goal, and I like that call by Coach Hendricks. Ball spotted at the 36. That will make this a 54-yard field goal attempt for the NC State transfer, Ian Williams. Good snap and hold. Kick's got enough distance. It's going to be just wide. Boy, he does have a huge leg. Just missed that one to the right. And North Greenville gets the hold. They'll take over on downs. That's something that that team needed right there. The Crusaders needed to get a good stop because that offense was moving in that first series, and they slowed them down a little bit. They caught their breath. They're like, all right, we're here. You know, all right, let's show up. Let's play some football now. That's what you like to see from a team that's coming up to play a bigger challenge. Take a look at that one again. Again, you weren't kidding about Williams. I mean, this is from 54 yards. I think it's two-thirds of the way up the uprights. That would have been good from 64 if he'd have had the accuracy correct. So a weapon for the Paladins they can use all season long. I'll tell you one thing. I, the Paladins have always had good kickers. They, they have. They've always had good kickers. Second possession of the game now for the Crusaders. Fields makes the connection. Pick up about eight yards. Doug Washington with a catch. Saw Ivan Yates over there getting his first tackle of the season. Boy, if you're on offense and you're facing second and short like this, it gives you a lot of chances to be very creative. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you, Mark. I just want to run the football. If I, oh, oh. That was almost big trouble. Fields didn't come up with a snap. I don't know if they're going to run the football or not, Cole, but uh, EJ Humphrey jumps on it. Oof. That about third and three now. Yeah, third and three, three yeah. and a half. And again, I, I would expect to see some of this. First game of the season. First time you're running some of these plays. He looks like he was ready for it. Just slipped out of his hands. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know what? I'm going to kind of get the quarterback a little grace. The snap was a little low. The snap gets up a little bit. I feel like it would be a great handoff. And they might have got the first down on that. Third down, Fields throws one across the middle. A lot of bodies. Let's see where they spot it. 
Boy, all kinds of traffic in the middle of the field. Washington comes up with a catch, and they pick up the first down. A well-designed play. Oh, yeah, that was a great route combination. Great mesh right there to kind of throw off the defenders, leave a guy open, and honestly, that was pretty good for him to get the first down. Fields, another quick pass in the flat. It's going to be second and short again for the Crusaders. I tell you what, Fields gets the ball out of his hands quickly. I mean, if you see that pallet defensive line, you got Cameron Coleman, you got Matthew Sachoka, you got a lot of guys that can get after you. Second down, run up the middle. That will be stuffed short of the first down. It looks like it'll be third and one. I saw Sachoka among others in there with a stop. DiMaggio also. So third and one. Crusaders would love to move the chains again. QB keeper dives forward and gets enough for the first down. So the Crusaders will move the chains again. They've got a nice little drive working into Paladin territory. Yeah, Paladin's got to find a way to step up right here. They're giving up a little bit too much. The ground game's starting to pick up for the Crusaders. They're throwing the ball well, and that's something the Paladin struggled with last season against great quarterback play. You know, Fields was stopped and then kind of made a second effort to pick up the first down, so a very nice play by him. Paladin show pressure. Fields back to pass. Picked off! And it's going to be taken to the house. Touchdown, Furman. Unbelievable play. Man, Callie Chiswick out, missed all last season, comes in, makes a huge play right here on the pick six, reads the quarterback, and makes a fantastic play. And you just look at the replay. I mean, no one's going to catch him. Just an amazing IQ right there. Ball, great ball hockey skills. Callie Chiswick, kudos to you. So Chiswick jumps the route. Boy, that's got to be a good feeling. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean well, I'll tell you one thing about Callie Chiswick. He knows how to study plays. He's very good at his craft. And you like to see a guy like that that missed the whole season last year come out and perform so far. So the first defensive score of the season for the Paladins. They tack on the extra points. And Callie Chiswick to the house. An unbelievable play jumping that route. The one for the score. Paladins on top, 14 to nothing. Pretty good way to start your 2022 season for Callie Chiswick. 56 yard interception return for the score. I'll tell you one thing, Callie Chiswick is a gamer right there. And I, you know what? I'm going to contribute something to his father, Gene Chiswick, defensive mind. I'm pretty sure Callie probably picked up some things from his dad. No doubt. So a big turn of events. The Crusaders are moving the football pretty well into Paladin territory until that mistake. Furman now has a two-score lead. We'll see how this works out. When you, lose, when you have momentum, then you lose it suddenly. It might take the air out of you for the rest of the game. Long kick into the end zone for a touchback. You know the Clay Hendricks will love to see that. Crusaders will take over on downs. Uh, yeah. I know, Coach, first down. I know Coach Hendricks is loving that. He always wanted to have another kicker that could put it in the back of the end zone. He finally has that, and I know he is pumped up to not be able to give teams a chance to return. So Bryce Fields, you got to have a short-term memory if you're a quarterback, right? And uh, you just made a mistake uh, on the, the route read. You gave up the touchdown. Let's see how Fields could do bouncing back here. Well, he's not just—he's not a young guy. He's a gra he's a graduate, and he, he's seen a lot of football, so I'm pretty sure he'll kind of have a short-term memory and be like, all right, it is what it is. Let's play football. Crusaders will keep it on the ground on first down. Don't get a whole lot. Looks like Dan Skiana in there for the tackle. We'll look at this one again. You got nowhere to go. You got Skiana coming in and crashing on you. Good luck. We would love to see number 66 make that kick out block right there, and I probably would have gave some running room, but it's kind of a missed Always looking at the offensive line, Cole Neely. Doesn't surprise me. Hey. Fields in trouble, keeps it himself. Scrambles for a couple of yards. Really nice play there. Turned a sack into a, a really nice game and gives him third and short again. Well, that's what you got to do if you want to stay in this football game. You're down two touchdowns. You got to get a little bit creative about what you can do in, your po in the pocket if it starts to collapse. Bring the ball down, tuck it, run, and see what you can get out of it. Third and short. Beal's going to take a peek over to the sidelines. New play is called in. See if it's another one of these quick passes. 
fakes the quick pass, in trouble. Boy, a very dangerous play there. So he threw one out in the flat. Luke Clark with a ton of pressure. Almost forced the mistake from Fields. And that was just a great job, just keeping your eyes on the play and, reckon, and just having great play recognition right there because they've been running those plays pretty much the last few couple of drives they've been in, and they've had some good success on it. Well, it looked like for a second there that Jeff Barrington was thinking about maybe going for it on fourth and short from his own 34-yard line. But he has brought, he has brought uh, Prosser in to punt the football away. Boy, another great kick. That's two good ones. Chiswick throws up the fair catch this time. He'll take the ball in at his own 18-yard line. Paladins will take over. So Furman's first drive went down, scored a touchdown. Second drive went down, missed a field goal. Got to be feeling good about the offense so far. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Paladin fans should be excited. I mean, Tyler Huff may have had one bad throw so far, but, I mean, you look at the two throws that he did make were really beautiful throws, and that's something the Paladins haven't necessarily had. They, they didn't really have that the last couple seasons. Trying to figure out how this new offense is going to work will be just beautiful for Paladin fans just to understand that Coach Roper has the game plan, and he's going to find ways to succeed. Justin Roper, the new offensive coordinator. Transfer in from Holy Cross. He's already dialed up over 100 yards of offense. Pass to Miller across the middle. Shakes the tackle up near the 45-yard line. He is so good. He is so good. What a great play. I'll tell you, Mark, you, you, if you've never seen a unicorn, that is Ryan Miller. He is a unicorn. I mean, look at this. This beautiful, I mean, get, gets out of a tackle, breaks a tackle, keeps running. I mean, most guys can't catch Ryan Miller once he breaks a tackle. Keeper. Lots of room to run. Is he going to take it all the way? Looks Tyler like Hopp into the end zone for the score. Paladins rolling here in the first quarter. Wow. This is this is really good for the offense right here. I mean, you you kind of have you have athletic quarterbacks. You've always had athletic quarterbacks, but to see your quarterback just bring it down, run like that, get a great gain, and then score a touchdown. I mean, it, it just feels like there's more life in this Paladin offense than we've seen in past seasons. I know they're excited. I know the fans will be excited with Coach Roper and his design and his play calling. So far, so good, Mark. So Callie Chiswick had a 56-yard interception return. Tyler Huff says, I'll have a 56-yard run. How about that? So two 56-yard scores in about two minutes of action. Give the Paladins now with the extra points a 21-0 to lead here in the first quarter against the Crusaders. There he is again, Tyler Huff, keeping it in himself, taking it all the way to the house. Palin is up big here in quarter number one. So Furman up by three scores. And uh, really courtesy Cole Neely of the big play. Obviously had the interception return and then Huck with the keeper there. And he had he had some speed. He had a lot more speed than I thought. I did not think that thing was going the whole way when he tucked it. Well, I'll tell you what, Mark. I, I, I didn't doubt that he didn't have the speed. I, you know, my eyes weren't going to deceive me. I wasn't going to judge a book by its cover. I could tell Tyler <laughs> Huff had a little bit of wheel to him. He got a little swag to him. You know, he just got married. You can tell he has that swagger that he just got married to. He looks great. So Huff has 83 yards passing and 73 yards rushing in the first 11 minutes of the season. He'll be happy with that. Another kickoff for the Paladins. Another touchback. Tell you what, Ian Williams, he talked about how strong his leg is. He's been showing it off here so far tonight. I'll tell you what, it's only a matter of time before the coach Hendricks feels like, you know what, let's go ahead and take a 60-yard shot and see what he can do. It's only a matter of time, Park, I'm telling you. Well, he had plenty of distance from 54 earlier, just couldn't quite connect. So if you're the Crusaders, I think you need to find a way to try to hold on to the football for a little while. You don't want to give it right back to Furman. You need to move those chains a couple of times. Maybe lean into running the football a little bit as well if you can, because this game is already getting out of hand. And Mark, the crazy thing is we're still in the first quarter, and NGU only has 44 yards of total offense. And look at Furman's 196. It's gearing up to be a long, after, long evening. And off off the left side, doesn't pick up a whole lot. And a cavalcade of Paladins there to make the tackle. Kitchen, 
Crusaders like to move quickly. I love the pace and the tempo. That's going to wear out some opponents that they play this season. Oh, yeah. Another quick pass into the flat. Paladins were ready for it. Take time, give me a warning. You got to wonder if the Crusaders have something where they're going to fake one of those quick ones and try to head over the top at some point. If they can give Fields enough time to do something like that. Who knows? That might be a halftime adjustment, Mark. They might come out swinging like that. They do get the ball to start off the half. So Fields facing third and six. North Greenville really wants to hold on to the football longer than three plays if they can. Fields back to pass. Rolls out. Throws deep. Makes the catch in Paladin territory all the way down to the 30-yard line. Tyree Funny, he's not joking around. Big gainer. No, he's not joking around. And right there, day one, Wilkins gets beat in coverage. Way to make a play when you really need it right there. And that's exactly what Funny did. So a big gain for the Crusaders. The biggest gain of the day for them. They've got the ball inside the Paladins 30-yard line for the first time today. 42-yard connection. Fields. Fires one across the middle, intercepted by the Paladins to stop another drive. Big play by Ivan Yates. I mean, the Paladins find a way. You get a big play against them, their defense will find a way to get that back. And what a play right there. He got up there, didn't he? He did, and he didn't catch it cleanly. He had to make an adjustment with his body going to the ground. Let's take another peek at this. Gets his hands on it, kind of juggles it, gets his arms underneath it for the interception. Second turnover of the game for the Crusaders. And I know Coach Hendricks is happy when that defense is causing turnovers. Yeah, you don't want to see one of your guys get beat on the post route, but hey, you got to take it where you can. When you get the turnover, your defense is able to create one, run with it, and you forget that post play, and then you're ready to go on. So Paladins take over at the eight. Devin Abrams in the backfield, along with Tyler Huff. Huff gives to Abrams, picks up a few. Been very impressed with how clean the Paladins have looked so far. They just had that one motion penalty earlier on offense. But they, they look like they've been running plays all season long and we're just in game one. You know what? They, they, you got an experienced offense line up front. I feel like that makes everything a lot easier when you got guys like Evan Jumper, Pearson Toomey, Jake Johanning, Wyatt Hughes. And you just, you just can't help but feel confident and safe in this offense. Huff gives it to Abrams. Abrams has his legs chopped out from underneath him. He'll be a little bit short of the chains. And he'll bring up third down. And Mark, plays like these kind of make me miss the, the good old fullback dive days under <laughs> Coach Hendricks. And when uh, Coach Chronic and Coach Quarles were here, good old little track play. Palin is in a bunch formation. Back to pass, in trouble, scrambling. There's one down the field. Wow. For the catch, deep into Crusaders territory, stays on his feet. Another huge play for the Paladins. Luke Shiflett with the big catch and run. Wow, Luke Shiflett did play last season, but man, what a huge play. Tyler Huff being able to eye him. Wow, what a ball. On the run, on the money too. Beautiful pass. I tell you what, Huff just bought himself all kinds of time. You saw him kind of wave at Shiflett like, hey, turn it up the field. I'm going to find you. Hits him right over the shoulder for the big gainer all the way down to the 20-yard line, a 64-yard strike. And the Paladins are trying to add six more here before the end of the first quarter. I mean, when you got a guy with that much experience that's, that's been around for a while, he, he understands how to make things happen. Back to pass again. In trouble, somehow wow. stays on his feet. He's gonna keep it himself. Wow. Inside the 10 yard line, are you kidding me? All the way down to the nine yard line, Tyler Huff. Be careful, young man. You don't wanna be running out there with safeties and linebackers, but it pays off for him here. Look at this athleticism. Oh my goodness, it's kinda of like watching like Woo. Lamar Jackson move around a little yeah. bit. I mean, just the escape artist ability right here. If this was Madden, I, I would think his, break, his ability to break the sacks and everything, I'd probably give him at least about a 90. I think it is warranted right now. He can play. He's a gamer. 
Up to 84 yards rushing now. See the clock ticking down. Last play of the first quarter. Anderson on the reverse will take it down to the six yard line. And if you're a Furman Paladins fan, you are thrilled with the first quarter of action. Ryan Miller with the touchdown catch. Callie Chiswick with a 56 yard interception return. And Tyler Huff with a 56 yard run to give the Paladins a 21 nothing to lead at the end of the first quarter. Paladins in business looking for more. We'll be back with quarter number two. Tyler Huff with a game's worth of highlight plays and stats in just the first quarter. I mean, I know Coach Hendricks is probably just licking his chops and he's smiling ear to ear. He's been wanting consistent quarterback play. And to be honest with you, Mark, I feel like a consistent quarterback can take this offense as far as they want to go. The yeah, offensive coordinator, Justin Roper, his first game as a Paladin. Yeah, I'll just, uh, you know what, I'll throw up 282 yards of uh, total offense in the first quarter. That's a pretty good start. And off by the Paladins. Looks like Roberto into the end zone for the score. The Paladins are up big to start the second quarter. That was Dominic Roberto. I mean, Dominic Roberto's like a big truck. I mean, it's just hard to bring him down. I mean, he just, he might as well just move out the way because he will run you over. He'll, he might lower his shoulder, and you don't want to be on the other end of that. Gets hit about the three-yard line, and like you said, just carrier, carries the defender right into the end zone. Outstretches the arm. He knows where it is. He knows where the goal line is. He's like, I'm going to get that ball over the goal line, pick up my first score of the 2022 season. That's his beautiful second effort. Paladins try to tack on the extra points. And they do, and they are on top, 28 to nothing. So a seven play, 92 yard drive for Furman. And they are rolling here to start the second quarter. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better start from this Paladin football team. I mean, offense, you go down there on the field in the first drive of the, of the game, you score a touchdown. Defense turns around, gets you an interception, and then your quarterback makes things happen with his feet, throwing the ball, making some plays. I mean, you, you just can't want anything better right now if you're a Paladin fan. I mean, just beautiful execution and a lot of different things. Of course, there's going to be some things to clean up that we saw in the first half, and one of those was that Tyler Hill throw that was an incompletion that could have been picked off and probably returned for a touchdown had it been a different football team. These two schools separated by about 12 miles. North Greenville's brought a nice contingency of fans with them today. Crusaders, of course, a Division II school playing up. The first Thursday night game in the history of Paladin Stadium. And um, Clay Hendricks might be making a call or two and saying, hey, guys, I got this idea. All <laughs> games on Thursday nights. Because if they're going to go like this, he's going to want to play a lot more games on Thursday nights. Who knows? We might see more of those uh, purple helmets and black uniforms. They've also uh, debuting those tonight. And they look sharp. I know, Cole, you and I have been excited about the uniforms. You especially as a former Paladin oh, offensive yeah. lineman. As the sun is starting to set, they're looking nicer, man. When they're under the lights here in about an hour and a half, I think we're going to be really pleased with how they look. I mean, just the amount of thought that went into this, this idea of having the purple helmets and the black uniforms, yeah, you want to look good when you're playing. So Fields back under center for the Crusaders. And uh, North Greenville's moved the ball a couple of times, but they've also had a couple of turnovers. Mm. A big run off the left side is going to take it into Paladin territory all the way down almost to the 30-yard line. The perfect start for the drive for the Crusaders. Miles Betts with a big run. Beautiful run right there. He should have been tackled for a loss, but one guy misses a tackle, and you'll see it right here. Looks almost like had him. Bryce Stansfield misses that tackle, and, man, he, he's gone almost. Good hustle by Dan Skiana right there. Yeah, Skiana tracking him down. So we've got a quick offensive time or uh, official timeout. Not sure what the holdup on play here is. But the Crusaders will have the ball first and 10 at the 31-yard line. Looks like there's an issue with the chains on the far side of the field. You can see it right at the top of your screen. I don't know if they got tangled up or what, but it has been resolved. Ch chain guys, man, I tell you, man. Some, 
It's a struggle sometimes, man. Jeez, always in your way. Ha. And if you're the Paladin defense, you're kind of glad. Gives you a second or two to get your bearings back. Ball comes out after quick hitter pass again. That's really an extension of your run game. Those really quick passes to wide receivers out in the flat, just trying to keep the Paladins honest. Yeah, I mean, you, you, can, you need that right now. I mean, you want to be able to, yes, hold some things back in your playbook, but it's good to kind of just execute some other things that you want to show for other teams coming up. You saw the end of Betts run again there. Second and seven. Fields, back to pass. Tries to make a contact, or I mean a lot of contact there between the defensive back and wide receiver. I don't know if that ball was going to be catchable or not, but uh, referees keep the flags in their pockets. Uh, that was close. That was very close. Let's look at the replay right here. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't think he. I don't think he had the speed to get there. But man, if he did, that was definitely pass interference. I will. I will say that. Yeah, Cam Brinson, strong safety for the Pals. Going to tell you that wasn't pass interference. No, that's fine. You know, I, I'll listen to <laughs> it. I'll laugh it off. You know, I, I'll think it's funny, but that's another issue. All right, third and seven now. Fields. Mm, a lot of pressure. Overthrows everybody. I don't know if he was on the same page with his wide receiver or not. And the defensive line for the Paladins gave Fields about a second and a half to throw that football. It's like Beast warming the honey right there. Looks like it should have been a hold on number 58, too. Oh, a big hit by the Paladins. Whew. Tell you what, if you're... like Braden Gilby delivering the hammer there. Tell you what, I've I, I practiced against Braden Gilby in the past when I was a player here, and, man, when he would come through on those eight-gap blitzes, I don't even think those, uh, those concussion pads that's on the top of your helmet, I don't even think those were effective enough. He just comes with such a boomstick. 45-yard field goal attempts. For North Greenville. Kick's got enough leg. It's going to miss to the right side as well. So the Crusaders come up empty again after getting into Paladin territory. Had a turnover there last time. And they come up with the missed field goal this time. Paladins will take over on offense. They're up big in quarter number two. Has been rolling up 28-0 here early in the second quarter. They will take over on their own 28-yard line. Looking for more. Tyler Huff's been the story under center for the Paladins, a grad transfer from Presbyterian. Has been lights out so far in his Furman debut. Referees blow the whistle. About to get back at it. Huff with the handoff. Paladins pick up a few. That was Devin Abrams on the carry. Good four-yard run right there. Crusaders have not been able to slow down the Paladins much so far. Huff showing off his legs again. Picks up another big run. And first down. He's closing in on 100 yards already. I mean, that's what you want to see out of your quarterback. Even when pressure's in his face, he finds ways to make plays. He did it with his feet this time. I mean, he's he's been playing lights out. And I think the Palace really won big by getting this Presbyterian transfer quarterback. So Paladins move the chains again. That was their 11th first down. Huff. Hands it off. Mm. Abrams up the middle. Inside the 40. And the Paladin freight train keeps on rolling on offense. Look like an outside zone run. And oh, man, they're, they're moving people up front. You, you can really see the experience on this offensive line. I mean, fantastic blocking. And Evan Abrams makes a good cutback right there on Evan Jumper's block. And he's almost to the races. Huff, back to pass. Mm. Miller catches it inside the 20. So Miller closing in on 100 yards receiving here in the first half as well. There goes the unicorn once again. I mean, he's going to show up every single play. I mean, and somehow, some shape before, whether he's making a blocker, he's making a catch. He's going to show up. Paladin's inside the 20. That's up to 85 yards receiving for Miller, 171 yards through the air for Huff. Huff's going to throw again. 
Tons of time. I just running back. What a spin move. Are you joking right now? Devin Abrams. Mercy. Hey, human joystick right there. I mean, beautiful spin move. And Dan, did you see when he lowered his shoulder into that defender? Yeah. Oh my goodness, Brett pack a lunch. Watch this. Mwah. Right there. That's, hey, I'll give number eight there. I mean, way to make a tackle right there, but hoo-wee. Roberto and Abrams, they can beat you with their feet, and like you said, they can put their shoulder down and run right, run you right over as well if you're not careful. Well, that's the new offense, Mark. I mean, we're, they're getting away from that two-back system, and they're kind of going back to that traditional running back look. Huff, Anderson, touchdown Paladins. Nice little play call there. Oh, beautiful play call right there. Wayne Anderson might be the fastest player on this Paladin offense. You get him on a little bit on that swing route. Great delivery right there, and beautiful. I tell you what, Huff, I've been very impressed by him. Every one of his passes just perfectly located for his receivers to be able to make an easy catch. I tell you what, this is exactly what the Paladins want in a quarterback. A guy that understands it and knows how to play the position extremely well. He's not a young guy. I mean, he, he's had years and years of experience to kind of hone this his craft, and he's playing tremendously tonight. Alex Lepro taps, tags on the extra points. Paladins are rolling up 35 to nothing. Wayne. Record setting night out of the Paladins offense. Yeah, 360 yards of offense in the first 18 and a half minutes of this game. Ian Williams on. I believe he's had three straight touchbacks. Four straight touchbacks. Crusaders will take over again. So North Greenville, 136 yards of offense. They've had a couple of big plays. They've gotten into Paladin territory on three different occasions. Missed a field goal, a couple of turnovers. They've been moving the football okay. They just need a long, sustained drive. More importantly, they've got to keep their defense off the field because they are getting worn out right now. So they've got to be thinking, hey, obviously we want to go down and score some points, but if we could eat some possession, give our guys a breather over there on the sidelines, that'd be very helpful. Oh, hands down. I know the feeling when you're ready to keep constantly being on the field and you just get a little bit tired, of, especially when you got to push guys and move them. I mean, good golly. That was Yavin Smith. Picks up one. Gilby, we've been calling his name a lot tonight with another tackle. Furman Paladins in their 117th season of football. That's hard for me to get my head around. Really good play call for the Crusaders. They're going to pick up a first down, it appears. He got enough to do that. That could have been a lot bigger play. Really good defense by the Paladin secondary. They let a lot of those uh, defensive linemen and linebackers through, and it uh, almost really cost Furman. Well, it was really good by the Paladins. For, for find a way to beat a block and stay in pursuit, and that's something that they've emphasized heavily on. Ball's on the ground. Looks like the Paladins came up with it, and they did. Fields... Having a little problem with the exchange with the running back. It's going to be the third turnover of the game for North Greenville. And the Paladin offense is going to be back out on the field again. Do we have a crown? Do we have a turnover crown? We do. Wow. And Trey Rogers, a guy that's been, been in his pal on his Paladin team for a while now. He makes a play, gets on the recovery. Man, I I I'm excited to see young guys that have grown a little bit older make plays like this. It's a beautiful thing to watch this Paladin team kind of grow and prosper right now. Why did he take the crown off so quick? It's probably because he has that head of hair, man. I mean, it's a lot. I wouldn't be wearing a crown either if my hair looked like that. It's like a little mini mane of hair. Paladin's right back at it. Taking over on the 36-yard line. Looks like Roberto up close to a first down. Paladin's just keep on rolling. If they can convert here on this drive, they'll have almost 400 yards of offense in the first half. Roberto just taking his time, weaving through, getting some good blocks. Second and one. I'll tell you, Mark, I can't remember the last time a Furman football team has had this many yards of offense in a, in a half, in a first half like this. Roberto up close. Looks like he'll have enough for a first down. They'll move the chains again.
you got to be excited about your uh, your boys on the offensive line, the way they've been playing so far. Cole is a former offensive lineman here at the Palace. Yeah, man. When you're the when you're the old guy, you're the old head, and as you're getting older, you see the young guys step up, and they're starters now, and they're making plays, and they're just beautiful blocks all around, man. And it makes you feel swell with a little bit of pride, and I'm glad to see this experienced unit play so well so far. Tomlin and Toomey, both all-conference, all-SOCON preseason. They're playing like it so far. Devin Abrams. Again, Paladins keep facing second and short. I feel like it's second and one, second and two on almost every possession. That's going to be really tough on the Crusaders. Well, that's what you want when you're an offensive coordinator. You want to be in these second and short, third and short situations. It makes it easier for your play calling ability. I mean, when you're blocking the Crusaders as well as you are right now, keep chugging the ball down their throat. They can't handle it right now. Huff, back to pass. Rolling out. Going to keep it himself. Kind of try to stick the football out and pick up the first down. Well played defensively by the Crusaders there. Looked like Jarek Foster coming over and forcing Huff out of bounds. It's going to be just short. It'll be third and one. Man, I, I know Palette fans are excited right now. If this is what you look like playing at a high level, you can only imagine what they're going to look like further down the conference. I mean, they're moving the ball well. They have a great quarterback in Tyler Huff. I mean, it, it's like you can see that they've definitely got better this offseason. Roberto, big hole to the five. Chugs all the way down to about the three-yard line. Another first down for the Paladins. That is 16 first downs. It looked like Roberto probably could have kept it outside on that, but I feel like he wanted some of that contact. He could have stayed out right there, but he decided to bring it inside, and he almost took a guy's head off. Actually, he kind of did. Ethan Alexander with the tackle, holding on for dear life there. He did a good job. First and goal for Furman. I think that dear life was an understatement right there, Mark. 204 rushing yards. And we're not even halfway through the second quarter yet. Huff. Roberto. Touchdown. Another touchdown. Dominic Roberto's second touchdown of the game. It is all Furman Paladins right now. 41 to nothing. They're balling right now, man. They're having fun. This is exactly how you want your Thursday night to go right here through the Paladins. Instead of having typical practice, they're playing the game, and they're executing all night tonight. Beautiful run, way to run through a tackle, not to get stuffed. I mean, it's like having a bowling ball right there. Good grief. Great blocking all along the offensive line. You also saw Parks Gissinger in there had a really nice block to free up Roberto for the score. Extra point is added. Powell is up 42 to nothing. Let's take a quick break. All Paladins here in Greenville.
Furman 42, North Greenville nothing. We're about halfway through the second quarter. All paladin so far, almost 400 yards of total offense. They've scored a defensive touchdown. Big night for Furman to open the 2022 campaign. Transfer kicker Ian Williams. Another touchback. I tell you what, I am impressed with his leg. The North Carolina State transfer. He is a redshirt sophomore, so he's got plenty of years to give to the cause here for the Paladins, and uh, he's going to make an impact for them. Like I said, Mark, I mean, the Paladins have always been known to have really good kickers, and it, it just continues to show year in and year out. I mean, just just amazing how, they, how well they've, they've been doing with specialists. So North Greenville looking for some kind of answer. They've been their own worst enemy at times in this game. Three turnovers. Two interceptions and one fumble so far. They take over on their own 25. Again, they've been moving the football decently, 147 yards. But keep on shooting themselves in the foot. Cut back run, picks up maybe a yard. Yeah, when you have a lot of self-inflicted wounds, Mark, it's hard for you to come back and win a game. I mean, the two picks, one was when they were basically in striking range, and I think the ball is just probably a little bit too much of an overthrow for, uh, for that receiver, and that's when... That the interception happened, but I mean, they they've they moved the ball decently well. I mean, they've held their own. They haven't laid down, to be honest with you. North Greenville playing up from Division Two. Good tackle. Nowhere to go. Be third and long for the Crusaders. This is when when you've got that hurry up offense and you're down big in a game really feel like that can wear on your defense especially right you don't want to go three and out here and get the, the ball right back to the paladin offense no you don't want to do that because the way that offense has been gelling it, it might be another touchdown that goes up on the board fields long throw up near midfield and a lot of contact there and looks like they're going to get travis blacks here on pass interference Maybe a hold. Let's see what the call is. We've had some big-time contact on both sides of the field on some incompletions that haven't been called. That one did not look near as serious, but it was right in front of the referee, and he saw something he didn't like. Let's take another peek at it. Uh, I don't... Might have got his hands in there. They're fouls bit. by both teams. Mm. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Offense. Pass interference. Defense. Those penalties offset. Head referee Brian Holland. Haven't been a whole lot of flags in this game at all. He got up underneath them a little bit early. The referee threw the flag immediately, so he did not like what he saw. I think if you, I think you would have liked to see Travis Blackshear kind of turn his head a little bit towards yep. the ball and make a play on the ball instead of just pushing the receiver out of bounds. That's where that flag more than likely came from. But hey, you get a, the offense makes a mistake as well, and it's offsetting penalties. And here you are, third and nine once again. It sounded like Jonathan Holt in the center is who was called for the personal foul by North Greenville. So offsetting penalties. Let's run it back. Third down and nine again. Fields in trouble, goes down. Paladin defensive line with a quick sack. That's Alex Meyer, the red shirt freshman. And right here, this beautiful pass rush right here. I mean, really, three guys were on the quarterback. I talked to Coach Hendricks. He said Alex Meyer and Luke and Luke uh, Bynum, not Luke Bynum, but Luke. Uh, just escaping Clark. me. Thank you, Luke Clark. Really good players. The, the, the hairs to Adrian Hope, and you can see that right there. I really feel like the Paladins are starting to develop a pass rush that has somewhat waned over the past few seasons. 
Prosser. Kind of off the side of his foot. It's going to take a pallet and bounce. It's going to be close to midfield where they end up marking it. Furman will take over first and ten. So five and a half remaining minutes here in the first half. 42-0 Paladins looking for more. And you and I have been talking a little bit. Tyler Huff, the starting quarterback. He's had a game's worth of statistics already, and we're curious how long he's going to stay in. Are we going to go to Jace Wilson to get some action here? And it looks like Wilson's coming out onto the field. Yeah, Jace Wilson took over the starting job, started six games last season, and he didn't play bad at all. He played well, made some freshman mistakes, but you could tell the future was really bright with Jace Wilson at the starting quarterback helm, and here he is now finally getting in. So Wilson, boy, oh. takes a big hit. I don't know if there was some miscommunication on what the play was. Looks like Jaden Clayton, uh, no, pardon me, D. Donald delivering the hammer for the Crusaders, their best defensive play of the game. Ooh, wee, that was a, that was a good hit on him. Woo. Yeah. Mm. Hey, welcome to the football game, Jace Wilson. Tell you what. So we haven't said this much at all for the Paladin offense, second and long. Ooh. High snap, Wilson comes up with it. They're trying to make something out of nothing here. Pump fake, keeps it himself, picks up a yard or two, is slammed to the ground. I tell you what, Chase Wilson, I know he's glad to be in the game, but he's taking two monster hits on the first two plays. Uh, that's one way to take two lickings right there, but you know, hey, the 2021 also con freshman team football player, Chase Wilson, it, 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 you like to see the young man continue to develop. He had a lot of great flashes that he could be something really great for his offense. And hopefully he continues to show that as he's given the opportunities. So third, we'll call it eight for the Paladins. Wilson, quick pass. Fantastic run. Inside the 20-yard line, all the way down to the 10, there is a flag down. That looks like Ben Ferguson, the freshman from Texas, with a great play, but some of that is going to come back. I think they're going to call an illegal block on the Paladins. Let's see. Boy, he's, he's elusive in the open field. Beautiful play design right there. A little jailbreak screen. Man, I'll tell you what, the Paladins, find a, they're finding ways to get some players around here, man. I mean, it's just... Really good kicker that's putting it in the back of the end zone. Receivers, freshmen making plays. Quarterback. Check the run. Holding. Offense. Number two. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still first and ten. So they call Joshua Harris, the sophomore wide receiver, on the hold. But again, like you said, beautiful play design. Yeah. Man, I know Pallet. Ooh, should have probably been one on Ryan Miller right there, too. But, I mean, when you look at this offense, I know fans are going to be really excited about Coach Roper's offense. I mean, he, the play calling has been just fabulous tonight. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better debut from your offensive coordinator with the play calling. Wilson with the handoff. Another big run on first down. That's Mylon Hicks, redshirt freshman from Texas. So the young fellas getting some action in the first half. Oh yeah, you can right now you can kind of see that the Palins starting offensive line is somewhat still in. The center has been taken out, Evan Jumper. But the reason of this, I mean, they're they're right now as good as those starting five are. Depth is a, a little bit of an issue for this Palin offensive line, and hopefully this does not hurt them in the long run. Also give them a chance to rotate some of that depth in. Another high snap. Wilson does a good job. Not a lot of places to go for Hicks that time. Be third down. And the Palins are killing it right now at third down. I remember when I was a player, Coach Hendricks loved to be in the plus category on third down. So he always wanted to stay above 50%. Right now they're four for five, 80%. They're kicking tail. Paladins have gone up over 400 yards of offense. They're at 427. Consuming a lot of clock on this drive, and I don't blame them. 
See what Wilson's got cooked up here on third and two. Hand up the middle. Looks like that'll be a first down for Furman. That'll be their 18th first down of the first half. Yeah, Furman's having their way in the run game right now. I mean, I, NGU is just struggling to, to contain that run. I mean, you can see it right here. Nice inside zone type of play. Squeezed right in between the guard and the center. Right about that eight gap. Kind of crashed in and man, good blocking up front. That was Grant Robinson, another freshman who's from Texas. Is every freshman, redshirt freshman on the team from Texas for the Palums? It seems like it right now. That's three redshirt freshmen in a row that have touched it. it all hail from that state. So that's Hicks again. Another nice run. 19 first downs for Furman. Man. It, it's, it's starting to feel like one of those type of record setting nights for this offense, the way they're moving the ball right here, Mark. I mean, you, you can't be more than just pleased and more than happy as a Paladin fan. Hicks, 5'11", 216. He looks bigger than that when he runs. Yeah, you got you to gotta run big. Can't, can't be like a little puppy running through it. Wilson keeps it himself inside the 10-yard line. Clock now under 60 seconds remaining in half number one. Sun just about completely set here. Paladin football after dark. Them purple uniforms are looking good. Mm. It's looking sharp. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. I, I kind of want to go down there and take a couple flicks. <laughs> I still got a little juice in me. I don't know if I there can be on the offensive line. Maybe put me at a tight end. I might be that more traditional tight end. They can at least get you a jersey, right? Yeah, they can yeah, at least yeah. get you a black jersey for the mantle. Oh, yeah. Wilson. Fires one across the middle. Oh. Diving almost catch. Just past the outstretch arms of Lex Capitano. Richard sophomore from Tampa, Florida. So 15 seconds remain in the first half. Third and four from the nine yard line. Right in the hands. Ah, man. That still would have been a tough catch. Completely oh, yeah. outstretched like that. A defender hanging on you. I don't know, Mark. I got some wide receivers that might be mad at me when I say this, but anytime I feel like, now this is just me, Mark. Anytime the ball touches your hands, I feel like you should catch it. That's just me, though. That's just me. Little reverse. First down picked up. Very close to the end zone. I think that's going to be all the way down to the one-yard line. Wayne Anderson scored on that play earlier in this game. And Firm is going to call a timeout. There are two seconds remaining in the first half. They'll have time for one more play. Don't know if you'll run the kicking unit out there, if you'll try to jam one more in the end zone. Anderson stuck his head down, tried to get in the end zone. We'll take a quick timeout. We'll be right back with one more play at the end of the first half. Two, so the Paladins. Gonna try to punch one more into the end zone. Wilson to Hicks. He is going to be stopped short of the goal line. Palin is going to call an immediate timeout, and now we really do have two seconds left. You see if Furman elects to kick. I'll go for it. It looks like the Paladins are going to bring the kicking unit out onto the field. Good play defensively. Really good job of sacrificing the body there by the North Greenville defensive back. That was Miles Betts. If he wouldn't have thrown himself in front of Hicks, Hicks might have been able to drag that into the end zone. Oh, hands down. It looked like D. Donald kind of got in there as well. And look at it one more time. D. Donald got off a block from, looks like Wyatt Hughes. You want to see Wyatt finish that block a little bit more, but I give, I give the Crusaders that. Way to have some fight out there. So that would have been Hicks' first touchdown as a Paladin. He will hope that he gets another chance here in the second half. Herman with a very short field goal attempt. Alex LaPro. Little chip shot right here. LaPro. Mm. Rips one through there, and it is good. And that is the final play of the first half. The Paladins are going to have some fun in the locker room at halftime. They are rolling all over the North Greenville Crusaders. 
your halftime score. Furman 45, North Greenville nothing. Can again, I understand this is a Division II opponent, but she still want to dominate no matter who the opponent is. This is a big game for them in a way to just see where their office is at. You know who else is clicking? Sports Information Director Hunter Reed, who came in here at halftime and said, this is the most points the Paladins have scored in the first half since 2011, where they scored 48 points against Presbyterian. They went on to win that game 62 to 21. Another big kick and touchback by Ian Williams. And the second half is underway. Yeah, teams might want to start thinking about uh, maybe we won't be returning kicks anytime soon when it comes to kickoff. Yeah, it's not like the touchback's going like a yard into the end zone. It's going six, eight yards into the end zone, sometimes out the back of the end zone. I mean, it's probably one of the strongest legs I've seen in a while and <laughs> that the pounds have had. So Bryce Fields back under center for the Crusaders. 10 of 17 in the first half. Did have two interceptions to go with his 82 yards. Fields had five carries for six yards on the ground as well. Crusaders come out running the football. And I think we may see a steady dose of that for both teams in the second half. Your goal here, I think, for both of these squads, obviously you want to play a lot of bodies, a lot of teachable moments, uh, you know, with the film room and everything as you go through the week. But keep everybody injury-free. And it seems like both teams have been injury-free so far this game. Let's keep it that way. Oh, Mark, you might want to knock on wood saying that yep, one right there. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. He doesn't want to speak too soon, but... No, this is good for both teams. You want to figure out what you have going into the rest of your your season. And right now the Palins, they figured out what they have at quarterback. I know they're excited. The, the Crusaders are starting to figure out what they have on their offense. Some young guys making some plays. Fields couldn't quite make the connection across the middle. And that was Hugh Ryan making the big hit. I'm not sure he saw the football because the football looked like it might have hit him right in the helmet as he was going in for the hit. Oh, no, he did try to make the catch. Uh, just, you know, not, not the hand-eye coordination wasn't there in that moment. It looked like he was kind of bracing a little bit, just worried about that defend or that receiver kind of running into him. But I think he definitely would want that opportunity back. Yeah, Washington might have got a little finger on it, too, to throw it off. So we've said this a lot tonight, third and long for the Crusaders. They're three of seven on third down. Fields to try to keep it himself, puts his head down, gets up close to the 40-yard line, picks up the first down. That's first down number seven for the Crusaders. A nice play. Hey, that's what you need right there. I mean, right, the game is a little bit out of hand right now. I mean, I, I don't I don't know how offensively the Crusaders are going to find a way to kind of come back into this game right now, but they're getting on the ball quick. They're trying to make plays. They've got to settle down a little bit once they kind of get back to the ball. Seems like they're a little bit out of out of touch right now. They're in that quick screen pass a bunch in the first half. Incomplete there. You see Fields does a good job running the football. Almost broke that for big yards. Yeah. Got to keep playing, Mark. Can't, can't stop just because you're down 42. Pick up of a couple. Like Yavin Smith, the sophomore from Florence, South Carolina. A lot of players on this North Greenville roster from the state of South Carolina. Third and seven. We'll see how Fields can do through the air. Screen pass over midfield, another first down. Nice play call. I've been impressed with some of the play calling tonight for North Greenville. Brad Robbins dialing up some plays, especially on third down. I feel like putting his team in a position to be successful. Yeah, you got a lot of North Greenville's receivers kind of taken away from the primary guy who the ball's going to go to. And it's creating a little bit of heaven. It's easier for them to pick up first down. I really like that play calling. It's kind of getting them, keeping them somewhat in the series. Crusaders, nothing doing at all. E.J. Humphrey on the carry. So again, these black uniforms and purple helmets, brand new for the Paladins. They're not going to replace their home uniform. I think it's going to be one of their alternates. Look really sharp. 
Yeah, I, I think a lot of the a lot of the old school fans would would have a heart attack if they saw those uh, white uniforms and purple uniforms go away. I really love that Coach Hendricks took a shot on this with the black uniforms and the purple helmets. I think this is really good for the Palos. Fields hit as he throws. That one will go incomplete. Paladins continuing with the heavy pressure on Fields just about every time he drops back to pass. Well, I feel like the Paladins feel pretty good about their secondary. Their secondary is one of the strongest points of the team. And you can look at this pass rush. You know, Luke Clark is going to be a guy that's going to show up. Bryce Stanfield is going to be another guy that shows up. A freshman that was really good a season ago, had a season in the injury, and he's finding ways to continue to show up on his defense and be able to create some havoc. So third and ten, ball just barely into Paladin territory. Again, the Crusaders have moved the ball a number of times on offense, but just have not been able to convert due to turnovers. Long pass in and out of the hands of the receiver inside the 20. That was a very well-thrown ball, and Smith could not quite come up with it. Yeah, Mark, like I told you, I feel like, and it's, again, it's just me now, if the ball hits you in the hands, I feel like you should come down <laughs> with it. I, that's just me, though, you know, because right here, it hits him right in the hands. He would have been in bounds, too, had he caught it. It would have been a big play, and that would have put them in at least close to field goal range, maybe. Q Ryan did a pretty good job getting his hand in there as well, but I agree, a catchable ball I wish he had back. Miles Prosser on to kick. Got Callie Chiswick back. Prosser, nice end over end kick. Chiswick will drag it in at about the 13 yard line. And the Paladins will get the ball for the first time in half number two with a 45 point lead. We'll be back right after this in Greenville, South Carolina with some more football. Jace Wilson back under center for the Paladins. You see Grant Robinson, redshirt freshman running back in the backfield with him. The Paladins get cranking on half number two. Robinson with a handoff. Picks up some nice blocks and a few yards. And hey Mark, when you, when you look at it, oh, they got an injured guy out there. But Mark, when you look at it, though, I mean, it, there's, there's a lot of beauty to, to games like these that even though the score is it, it's pretty much a blow, even though the score is somewhat out of hand, there's a lot of beauty in these moments. Hoping that's a cramp as you see uh, him going to the ground. He was kind of grabbing his calf and he's being stretched out now. So it was not cool when the game started. It has cooled off significantly since then. But uh, the defense for North Greenville probably feels like they played three plus games so far trying to hold on to the Paladins. Yeah, well, you see him kind of moving right there. As a former big man, yeah, that, that, that's how you move when you're starting to cramp. You, you need a little little PD like to kind of get you going and kind of get, rejuvenate the body and right now he's just has to get that looks like maybe a calf might be cramped up but but yeah Mark, what i really like about games like these and what a lot of people may not realize is that it's good to see when your offense is clicking even when you're north greenville and your offense is not clicking in the, in this in this way they've had they showed signs that they can be so, be pretty good down the road i understand this is a very tough paladin team this is a little bit of a tough environment to play in but when you look at it, there's a lot of beautiful things that you can see if you're the head coach for North Greenville that you know you have something to work with. You've got guys that can compete and won't lay down. And on Furman's side, you feel pretty good. you got a quarterback that can play pretty well at a high level, and he got tons of weapons to see him throw it to. So there's a lot of good in the games like these. And I would think for both head coaches as well, great stuff for the film room, great teachable moments. And you're going to get a lot of opportunities to play guys that you might not have thought you'd be out there. So it's Rodney Evans that was the player down for North Green, but it looks like he's okay, and it appeared to be cramps. We'll hope he's all right and can return to action. Paladins keep the ball on the ground. Out over the 25-yard line. Nice mid-zone run right there. Good blocking up front. Got the first down. Grant Robinson continues to look good. Pallet is moving the chains, and more importantly for them, moving the clock. Yeah, it looks like the Palins are finding ways to substitute some of their guys in and out. Pearson Toomey, number 75, comes out. You had talked a couple of times about getting those backup offensive linemen some reps today to see what you have, since there's some issues with depth. 
Yeah, in the center, you got Brian Lamb, number 79, another guy from Texas, redshirt freshman. So, I don't know, it might be a lot of a lot of redshirt freshmen from Texas. Yeah, who was recruiting Texas the last couple of seasons for Furman? Because they did a very good job. Robinson did a good job of staying on his feet, picking up six. He'll get a breather, and Mylon Hicks will be back in. So you see two stars still in right now. You see Wyatt Hughes, number 63, to right guard. And you see preseason All-American left tackle Anderson Tomlin still in right now, getting some more reps. Wilson, quick screen pass. Oh, ball's on the ground, picked up by the Paladins. That's going to cost them some more yards. So a play that was smothered by the Crusaders' defense almost turned into disaster for Furman, and now they'll be looking at third and long. Let's see what happened here. Ball squirting out. Well, as Coach Hendrick always says, ball security is job security. So I think somebody might be getting pulled off the field right now. I mean, he's very serious about that. And right here, you just got to hold on to the ball. You can tell the ball's loosening up. Not a good, firm grasp on it. Hicks picked it up and had some aspirations of a crazy play. Paladins keep possession. Another quick screen. Move it out over the 30. That'll be fourth and probably enough that the Paladins will want to punt the football away for the first time today. And here we are, 45-0, to the first time they're punting. That's a very good sign for that first-team offense for to be able to get that done and just kind of guide them along this game and not having to punt and being able to convert third downs and be able to create big plays. Paladin fans should be very, very happy with their starting unit. Ryan Levy on to kick for the Paladins. Oh, beautiful punt. Tyler Hamilton gets under the ball at the 19-yard line. 50, or just about 50 yards on that kick. We'll use this opportunity to take a break. Furman Paladins rolling. And this one, 45 to nothing, is your score. I don't like popsicles. I think they're a waste of space. I don't even know whoever created popsicles should should be should be put in jail. And it, it, I don't know. It, it's just I don't like them. Cole, we've got a lot to unpack from here on out. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever met another human being that walks the earth that doesn't. Who doesn't like popsicles? I will not do it. Nope. Interesting. More pressure from the Paladin defense. They're just not giving Bryce Fields any time at all. Yeah, make him uncomfortable. I mean, he has he played in seven games last season, not a lot of passing yards, but you, you want to make guys that aren't used to being in the game this long, you want to make them as uncomfortable as possible. And it's going to be a good learning tool for Bryce down the road. So the Crusaders keep it on the ground here. Boy, a nice aggressive run by E.J. Humphrey. It's about half of what he needs to pick up the first down. That'll be yet another third down for the Crusaders. They are 5 of 10 on third downs in this game. So it has cooled off significantly, I would say, Cole, especially in the last 20 minutes or so. Wasn't necessarily a hot night tonight, but still early enough, if you're familiar with the upstate South Carolina area, it's going to stay warm pretty much for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, Mark, I'm not going to lie to you. I was sweating bullets not too long ago, <laughs> just earlier in the game. I was sweating bad. Ooh, got to wrap up. Ooh, good Boy, hit. it's going to be close to a first down. Paladin defense was swarming. E.J. Humphrey did a good job of staying on his feet. And he's going to pick up a first down. That was all Humphrey to be able to stay in bounds and get just enough to move the chains. Really nice play. Well, sometimes you got to be able to create plays. You need playmakers like this. These are guys that are going to show up and when you need them later down the road in the season. And right there, day one, Wilkins, you got to make a tackle right there. Good tackle right there by number 40, the Paladin defense. Fields. Long pass to the far side of the field. Good grief. That's a dangerous pass. Took a long time to get over there, but it resulted in a few yards. Washington on the catch. Yeah, you want to see a little bit more zip out of that pass, yes. but hey, but you know what? You got to take a you got to take a good play when you can get one right now. And that's on the Crusaders. Haven't had a lot today. 
Fields now 13 of 25. He's over 100 yards passing. Mm. Crusaders up near midfield. So they've moved the football a number of times today, but just haven't been able to convert that at any points. And E.J. Humphreys had a really nice drive so far for North Greenville. And this is something that a lot of strength coaches like to emphasize in their offseason programs. is called finishing. North Greenville, have, they, they've been in a lot of good situations throughout the game. They've been close. They just haven't been able to finish drives. And I know they're trying to finish this drive to get at least something on the board. You don't want to leave here with a goose egg. That's a terrible feeling. Fields. Don't know if it was intentional or not, but it was wise to throw that one over his receivers because they were blanketed by Paladin defenders. Yeah, and that's something Coach Hendricks has talked about a lot. What he feels like is the strength of his defense is really in the secondary. And he has a lot of confidence in guys like Travis Blackshear, uh, Michael Robinson, Ivan Yates, even some of the young bucks that got to play last year just because how many injuries were in that secondary. He's very confident in what he has. So a new formation for North Greenville. Let's see what they've got cooked up here. Yeah, that was a legal motion. I don't know if they had a trick play coming or something different. We haven't seen that formation the entire game. One of the running backs could not keep his feet. Shuffled him just a little bit. That was Cole Richardson. That'll push him back five yards. Don't know what was coming, but I get the feeling it was going to be very creative. I don't know if I would run one of my more creative plays right now, Mark. I, it's, so, it's just the first game of the season. This is a game that really doesn't mean much when it comes to the conference standing. Yeah, you want to win every single game, but I don't know. I, I, if I'm North Greenville, I just want to hold on to some things because you may need them later on in the season. Fields. Shaking tackles. Cutting back. Has some blockers. Heck of a run into Paladin territory. Fields has done that a couple of times today. Yeah, I know defensive coordinator Dwayne Vaughn, he's not going to be happy about guys missing tackles, and that's something the Paladins always work on throughout practice is making tackles, wrapping guys up. And you see one, two, there's another one, three. Three missed tackles right there. And that makes it third and manageable now, third and six. It looks like that uh, Fields might have been banged up a little bit. Immediately goes to the sidelines, and the freshman Dylan Ramirez comes in. Mm. It's his first snap. And North Greenville is going to call a timeout. So let's hope that Fields is okay. That was going to be Ramirez's first snap as a Crusader. And Fields is over on the sidelines, being tended to by the staff. A little shaken up. Fields going into the tents. We're going to hope everything is okay with him. Had a very nice athletic run to pick up about 10 yards. And boy, he went to the ground hard at the very end of this. Kind of flipped around. Let's hope that he's okay. We'll keep our eye on that. He'll be replaced by Dylan Ramirez, the freshman. Gets his first action as a Crusader. Ramirez fires the pass in and out of the hands of the receiver, off the hands of one of the Paladins as well. That's going to bring up fourth down. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that ball has some zip to it. And again, Gosh. get with receivers. Like I said, if the ball hits you in the hands, you got to bring the ball in. I think that's like the golden rule for, re for, for receivers one-on-one. -on -one. Ball hits your hand, you got to make the catch. Yeah, you need to make a list of Cole Neely's pet peeves because this is definitely one of them. And Cameron Walker will wish he had that one back. He might have had some room to run as well if he could have come down with it. Oh, hands down. I'm, I'm going to give kudos to my old coach, Brian Bratton, for instilling that, that idea in my head about catching the football. Punt from Prosser. It's going to hit about the seven-yard line mm. and die right at the four. I tell you what, Miles Prosser, the punter for North Greenville, has had a really good night. He's had some boomers, and he shows he can kick one down inside the 20. Actually, all the way down inside the five. This will be the worst field position of the game for the Furman offense. That's a heck of a punt. But this is. is this is really good, though, for the Paladin offense because I agree. you get to find out now, all right, when, when you're kind of close to your own end zone, can you get out of that and make a 94-yard drive happen or 96-yard drive happen? This is what you want to see. That looked like one of my wedge shots, Cole Neely. 
<laughs> just throw it right down there close to the hole and it checks up. That's at least what I think my wedge shot should look like. Well, Mark, if it makes you feel any better, if I ever try to play golf, I'm not hitting the ball. I keep hitting the same spot of grass every single time. Okay. So, so I'm learning a lot about you. No popsicles. Yeah. I'm not bringing popsicles to you ever. Mm -mm. Nope. And no golf. Yeah, don't, don't take me to a golf range. Okay. Don't do that. Hey, Maybe whatever, top golf, though. Whatever works for you. Wilson, back to pass. Kind of a surprise. Throws one. Caught at the 30. 35. Up to the 40-yard line. A really nice play. And kind of a surprise. Kendall Dean, Brad student from Winston-Salem with a really nice play. Paladins have their back against their own end zone. They don't anymore. I like the play call right there. I mean, why not just take a shot? You're up 45 points. You want to figure out what your, what your quarterbacks can do. Now, I would have liked to see James Wilson get a little bit more oomph on that throw, but honestly, really good job by number 11, number 11, Kendall Dean, by readjusting to that ball, making a big play happen. Pickup of 38. The Paladin offense now over 500 total yards in this game. Paladins keep it on the ground. Mylon Hicks. We've got a bunch of different bodies in on that offensive line now. Seems like they've taken out their starters, giving them a breather. They want to keep them fresh because the, the task that they have next week will, will not be an easy one. Herman taking their time with the play calls. Hicks again. Breaks it outside. Picks up the first down. And it's now 23 first downs for the Paladins. Look at the replay right here. Looks like the tackle got pushed back a little bit in the backfield, but really good job by number seven by making a good cut off of that block and then finding some way to make something out of nothing when he should probably be dead to rights back there in the backfield. And has six carries for 39 yards for Hicks. A little boot action. Wilson. Completes. Cut back inside the 30-yard line. Kendall Dean with a second catch and another first down for Furman. You know, Mark, one of my favorite plays when I was a player was always like the boot plays because people describe it as like elephants just running down a straight line, and that's exactly <laughs> what it looks like. But as an offensive lineman, it's one of the easiest plays ever because all you got to do is not get any penetration towards the quarterback. All you do is run straight down the, uh, down the field. So, sideline to sideline is one of my favorite plays, hands down. So well-thrown ball from Wilson. Through it where only Dean could catch it. Hicks again. Stacked up at the line of scrimmage. A lot of leakage on that play. On the... You like what you're seeing from some of these backups? I am. You know, you, you want to find a way to build up depth, as I mentioned earlier in the game, that the permanent offensive line, once you get past those five, they don't have a lot of depth right there. That two season ending injuries to certain players on that team, and right now they need to figure out what they have if, God forbid, if someone else goes down. They need to know who else they can rely on in a game situation, and I feel like this is good for them to kind of get that experience against somebody else besides their own defense. Greenway and Hundley and Lamb over on the right side. Hicks gets it again. Had a big hole that time to run. Gets it down to about the 15. And I'll tell you something else, Mark. I'm really, I've been really impressed with the quarterback play from both guys yes. today. Huff and Wilson. I mean, it, it, I feel like the Paladin offense will be in good hands regardless of who's running the, running the show. But, you know, at the end of the day, Huff has played amazing. He's, he's played lights out so far. He played lights out the whole game while he was playing. And Jace Wilson, he's keeping the energy going. I mean, they, ha they haven't slowed down at all. Five, five, five. That's a lot of yards. A little angel number action right there. Ooh, good block. Hicks again, jumps over a defender down inside the 10. Mayan Hicks wants a touchdown. He wants his first Furman touchdown. I don't blame him. I would too. I think he's got a chance to get it. They keep feeding him. Yeah, keep feeding him. Man, I, I hate we missed it. Well, here, here it is right here. The right guard, number 65. What a pancake block. 
Let's get some syrup on that guy. A really good block right there, really good run. I mean, way to drive your feet. Oh, man, I just love good offensive line play, man. Oh, man, that's just beautiful to watch. What kind of syrup are you putting on that? Oh, uh, you know, good old maple syrup. Mark, I'm going to keep it playing, man. I'm cool with it. Kicks down to about the five-yard line. Paladins move the chains for the 26th time in this game, and that'll be the final play of the third quarter. Furman Paladins were up 45 points at halftime. They're up 45 points, headed to quarter number four, but they're looking for more. They're knocking on the door for North Greenville. We'll be back, 15 minutes of action remaining, all Paladins. Headed to quarter number four, all Furman Paladins, 45 to nothing. Knocking on the door, looking for more, and a lot of it's from Mayon Hicks, who's been great on this drive. Hicks, 10 carries for 61 yards on the day. Feed the young guy. Keep feeding the I young agree. guy. We want to see him punch one into the end zone. He has not scored as a Furman Paladin, as a redshirt freshman. It'd be a great chance to get one here. Paladins have it first and goal from the five-yard line. Quarter number four is underway. Wilson to Hicks. Hicks all the way down to about the one. A good job there. He's hitting the backfield. Did a good job of keeping his feet, picking up some yards. Real good stretch run right there. He wanted to see Ryan Lamb shoot his hat a little bit more on that reach block. That's a really hard block to make, but way to stick with it. Mine Hicks finds a way to get some positive yardage when it probably could have been a, a no gain or a loss. Second and goal now from the one. Paladins now over 300 yards rushing, 302. Looking to make it 303 right here. Paladins stack all the receivers to the left. Hicks. Oh, he's close. Haven't seen it signaled from the refs. Just short. You and I are like willing Hicks into the end zone at this point. We're like, come on, Mayan. Get it in there. I mean, it, when you're this close, you know, I, I just want Coach Hitchens to go ahead and call a timeout, run the good old fullback dive play. I feel like that's <laughs> the easiest thing to do at this point. Good job by the front four for North Greenville. Yeah, you, you got to have a little pride in these situations. We, we, when the score could be potentially 51-0, to zero, you got to have a little bit of pride. You don't want to get give, make, a, make it too easy for the freshman, not the freshman, excuse me, the rest of your freshman to score. Oh, Wilson has to keep it himself, dives into the end zone, gets hit hard, and he scores. So a little bit of miscommunication between Wilson and Hicks, and it cost Hicks the TD. Wilson gets it instead. Well, hey, whoever's fault that is, they'll know when, uh, when the film comes back on and on you know, practice on, or really when they meet up on Monday. But, man, good, good hustle right there, and way to make an effort. Chase Wilson, way to get yourself a touchdown, young man. It's interesting, yeah, I mean, Again, they'll figure that one out in the film room. Yeah. It still counts for a touchdown. I know Mayan Hicks is probably, if that's on him, I bet he's thinking, oh, my goodness, yeah. I was right there. Pallon is looking to tack on the extra points. Continues a very good day on the kicking game, for the kicking game. Firm is now on top, 52 to nothing. We'll take another break. North Greenville going to see if they can scratch on the scoreboard before this one's over. All Paladins in Greenville, South Carolina. Furman on top, 52 to nothing. A lot of it's thanks to that offensive line. You think they're talking about former Furman Paladin Cole Neely? You think they're talking about you down there? You know, boys, if we had Cole Neely, we'd have scored in five plays instead of seven plays. That might be what they're talking about down there. Well, I hope not, but you know what? I want to talk a little bit about this offensive line and how talented they are. I mean, just phenomenal talent. We talk about their two tackles, Pearson Toomey and Anderson Tomlin, first team preseason all-conference players. And you talk about their interior offensive linemen, Evan Jumper, Wyatt Hughes, and Jake Johanny. This really talented front five. And I will say one thing about Pearson Toomey. Dude is strong as an ox. Squats almost 700 pounds and benches over wow. 500 pounds. I mean, gosh almighty, I want to run the ball to his side any day. Oh, yeah. So Wilkins on the... Special team stop. So it was not a touchback, but it's terrible field position for North Greenville. 
Well, in a way, this is good for North Greenville. See what you can get out of this. I mean, at this point, it has to be a big learning learning situation for both teams just to improve on some things that you don't get to have and practice every single day. So Dylan Ramirez, the freshman, going to keep it himself, pick up a couple of yards. Freshman QB kind of thrown into action today. Fields went out a little bit earlier with an injury. We're going to hope he's okay. Oh, yeah. Crusaders keep it on the ground, pick up a couple. Oh, yeah. Do you want to see them try to find a way to get in the rhythm of running the football? At this point, if I'm the Crusaders, just see what you can do. Try to run the clock out a little bit more. I mean, you, you want, again, you want to get a feel for what you have, but at, at this point, we also want to limit injuries for both sides. You want guys to be healthy for next week because it's a long season at the end of the day. You want guys to be able to stick around, and unfortunately, uh, the Crusaders have lost their starting quarterback uh, just for the game, and hopefully he is doing well, and we'll be giving thoughts and prayers to him. Another third down for the Crusaders. Ramirez, pass underneath. Great play defensively for the Paladins to stack it up and force a fourth down. Nick, Nikki Kuzimka with the tackle. Really good play there. Good play by Nikki Kuzimka. One, one hardworking linebacker for the Paladins. I mean, I, when I played there, Nikki was a pain to block just because he was just so stubborn and very persistent. So you, I love seeing him make plays as a former player. Next up for North Greenville, they'll be hosting Newberry next weekend. Paladins will be headed down to play Clemson. Another boomer. I tell you what, Miles Prosser's had himself a night punting the football for North Greenville. I've been very impressed. I tell, well, one thing, too, about them, Mark, I've been really impressed by the specialists today. I mean, it's, you look at the Paladins, their kicker, um, you look at Ian, he's booting it. Down, down to the end zone and just, just fantastic on both sides. Was, this is a specialist game. All Paladins, we'll be back with more after this. An unfortunate situation for North Greenville. That's the starting quarterback, grad student Bryce Fields. And Coley's in a some kind of sling right there and he did go down hard on that arm we don't want to speculate what the injury is but does not look good so dylan ramirez may be getting a lot more action as a freshman than he was thinking well hey that's the name of the game sometimes it's next man up and you know i hate to see it for bryce fields especially you know as a grad player and you get hurt like that but hopefully you know it's not too serious paladin offense back on the field wilson with the handoff Ooh, that was a great run Another nice run. Look like Tyler Reed, redshirt freshman from Tennessee, getting some action. So if you're a running back for the Paladins, you got a big smile on your face because you're you have probably already touched or will touch the football tonight. That is eight different Paladins who have rushed for Furman this evening. It's kind of like the, the good old Oprah meme right there. You get, a, you get a touch, you get a touch, you get a touch. <laughs> Nowhere to go this time for Reed. And again, the Crusaders in some way kind of penning their ears back, knowing the Paladins, especially with this huge lead, are probably going to be running the football. Yeah, I, I think they, right now they just want to see what they can continue to produce in the run game. A little bit bad on that, com that combo block between the center and the guard. They really kind of help the guard out. The guard has to get a better step to shoot his hat across, but really good play by the, by the Crusaders to make it a backfield. So we'll see what Justin Roper, the Paladins' new offensive coordinator, is going to dial up here on third and four. Keep the ball on the ground. Ooh, going be very close to a first down. Reed got his legs cut out from under him, but he moves the chains. Hey, that, hey, that's the name of the game, too. We're running the football. 
Some guys are going to come for your legs, and one of his previous runs looked like he kind of dragged the defender with him for a second. So they're going to try to take him down however they can, but, I mean, really good blocking right there on that nose guard. Way to kind of seal it off, give the running back a lane to kind of hit and get some good yards to pick up the first down. Furman closing in on 600 yards of total offense. The last time they had 600 yards of total offense in a game, November 9th of 2019 against VMI. And you see 314 of that on the ground. Maybe one more to add to that. Oh, yeah, man. Mark, I remember that game. That game was just crazy. A lot of pushing and shoving going on on the field right now. But yeah, Mark, I remember that VMI game like it was yesterday. You had a guy like Hamp Sisson throwing a rock, yep. over 200-something yards passing. The run game was just, just crazy with Devin Wynn and a whole bunch of guys. I mean, this is the time of the life back in 2019. I, I really missed that season. It was so fun. That ball was caught. It was a good grab there by Lex Capitano. Furman will be facing another third down. They are 8 of 10 on third down in this game. This will be third and eight. So the Paladins head down the road to take on the Clemson Tigers next Saturday in Death Valley. Clemson, of course, plays Monday night down in Atlanta in the Mercedes-Benz Dome. It's Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, so it'll be a short week for Clemson. Furman will take any advantage that they can get, so getting Clemson <laughs> on a short week is about all you can ask for, I think. Yeah, you, you kind of get them a little bit worn now. You know, they just had a game Monday. They got to turn around and play Saturday. Yeah, Mark, I'll get that one to you. They do got to take it, take as many advantages, but from what I've seen today, I think that would be a really good test for this Paladin team just to see where they stand against oh, the quote-unquote big boys of, the, of college football, so I, I'm looking forward to seeing that offense play against that stellar Clemson defense. Just the second punt of the game for Ryan Levy. He had a 49-yard punt his first time. Another really nice kick. Good hang time. Be dragged in at the 16-yard line for North Greenville. So about halfway through the fourth quarter, we'll take another quick break. Yeah, you know, I, I just want to talk a little bit more about the teams here. And, Mark, and I'm going to make a few more changes. I think I may put the Citadel at the very bottom of the rankings. You would put Citadel at the bottom? Yeah, you know, I, I, I have a little bit of hard feelings towards the Citadel right now. It's, it's a little personal. I don't That's know. okay. That's you know. why they call them rivalries, right? Yeah, you know, I, I had a couple Bulldogs following my ankles in the past. I don't really like them that much. But, uh, but yeah, no, just looking at this right now, again, I would, I would put ETSU down just a little bit. Uh, I still put them at five. I'd move Western Carolina above them. Mercer at one, Chad at three, and Furman at two. Just for what I've seen so far, and I always pay attention to the conference. Crusaders keeping the ball on the ground. Samaj Lackett, the senior from Clover, South Carolina. And it's quickly third down for the Crusaders. Got another quarterback into the game, Eric Tuttle, the redshirt sophomore from Monk's Corner. He's going to get a little bit of action tonight as well. Ooh, got some goggles on. I haven't seen a quarterback with goggles in a long time. Tuttle back to pass. A quick screen across the middle that North Greenville's mm. used successfully a number of times tonight. They use it successfully again and pick up another first down. That was Darius Young, the grad student from Shelbyville, Tennessee, on the catch and run. And that's something, again, that's showing itself as missed tackles, and that's something the Palins had to eliminate going forward if they want to be a legit contender in this conference. Because they have all the talent there, but they have to wrap up. So Tuttle went to throw that quick hitter screen, and there were about three Paladins standing between him and the receiver that he was looking at, and he just throws one away. I don't blame him. Well, one thing about this Paladins defense, they know how to adjust. They're very adaptable to plays that they've seen over and over again. They're going to be able to make those adjustments, and if you keep trying to throw that same play at them, they're going to more than likely try to cause a turnover. Tuttle with the goggles, also rocking a mustache. Cold chipper, you ever go mustache? Mark, when you were playing in your playing days, your mustache or beard? Or 
Mark, I can't even grow facial hair. I wish I could, <laughs> but I can't even grow facial hair, man. If I could, I best believe I would. Cole, I'm learning a lot about you tonight, man. Right, man. This is that kind of night, I guess. But you would grow the facial hair. So would you go full beard or would you go just mustache? I know with the Top Gun movie recently, <laughs> mustaches are in favor right now. Mark, I would never do that. I would go full beard. You go full down. beard. Okay. I, I got a lot of friends that would probably look at me crazy if I tried to pull that off. Third down, Tuttle on the run. Fires one deep down the field, kind of up for grabs. And he's very lucky that one was not intercepted. There is a flag down on the far side of the field as well. Let's see what's going on there. I'm going to guess that's going to be, I would, I would assume a hold or maybe a lineman got too far down the field. Let's, let's see what happened. That's what I'm thinking, Mark. Maybe an illegal man downfield. Referees taking their time sorting this one out. We'll hear from Brian Holland. Yep. Offense, number nine. Covered up receiver going downfield. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. It's going to be bringing up fourth down. You see the penalty there. Haven't been a ton of penalties in this matchup. Yeah, relatively clean football yeah. game. Just three penalties. Yeah, very clean. Another kick for Miles Prosser. And another beauty. So it's going to hit at about the 25 yard line. Be down right there where the Paladins will take over. First and 10. Furman Paladins, perhaps their last offensive opportunity of the night. They're winning big here in Greenville. Back at Greenville, South Carolina, Furman on top of North Greenville, 52 to nothing. Lots to celebrate for the cheerleaders and fans. It's another quarterback change for the Paladins, Micah Robinson. In at QB now. Pardon me, Luke Hedrick. Redshirt freshman from Orlando. Always a play-by-play -play guy's favorite thing in a blowout is when every player plays, right? Yeah. And my, you got to keep track because they're bringing in like four different ones every play. So might as well clear the bench. Allow me a little grace. Yeah, clear the bench, man. So you got to be ready for anything. Hedrick. Paladins keep it on the ground. It looks like Tyler Reed again takes a big hit. So Paladins start to look forward to the Clemson Tigers. I know you and I were talking before we went on the air tonight. You remember going down to Death Valley and playing a few years ago when you were with the Paladins. Always a big treat to walk into one of those big stadiums, take on not just an FBS team, but one of the top five teams in the country. Uh, like, like I told you, Mark, I pride my college, my college football career on that 2018 season. One, I got to win a conference championship, which was amazing. But I also got to be a stepping stone for uh, Clemson to be the national championship that year. I want to say I helped spur them to be great. <laughs> the defensive adjustments made after seeing Cole Neely's offensive line performance propelled Clemson to the title. That's what I'm hearing right now. Uh, take it how you want to see okay. it. Take it how you want to see it. Take it how you want to see it. But man, when I was just talking about how fun that game was, I mean, it's just a sea of orange. You got four just high draft picks surrounding your offensive line and guys that are going to be future, probably Hall of Famers, guys yeah, that are going to be draft picks. Power, you went up against the Power Rangers down there. Oh man, I, my, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. There it is, 2018, what a, what a time. Went down to Macon and uh, gave Mercer a little bit of the business. Another punt for the Paladins. There's flags down on the field in some very strange places. So let's see what the call is. Yeah. It'd be too many men on the field maybe for North Greenville? I'm not sure. Two flags down. I say that's a lot of laundry out there. 
So referees, after not calling a whole lot the entire evening, have been busy here the last minute or so. Right, they, got a, they got a little active. Referee Brian Holland trying to sort everything out. Legal substitution. 12 minute formation. Defense. Five yard penalty. Replay fourth down. We're going to replay fourth down here. Correction. The penalty declined. Actually, they're going to decline the penalty. Give North Greenville. The ball back. You see Jeff Farrington, Citadel graduate. No offense to you, Cole Neely, since you were going in on the Bulldogs earlier. That's all good. <clears throat> Ninth year at North Greenville, 44 and 44 coming into this game. So he's going to go one game under 500. They play Newberry next weekend. He'll be looking to bounce back. Made the playoffs back in 2016. When they host Newberry next Saturday night, it is. National Championship Celebration Night for their baseball team that won the national title earlier this year. Oh, that's neat. So that'll be a lot of fun. Crusaders continue to keep it on the ground. Yavin Smith. So as we were saying, going down to Death Valley, Palin's going to have their work cut out for him. Oh, yeah, it's not going to be a cakewalk. I mean, you, you, for the, our, this one, I'll tell you what, Mark, this is what I really want to see. I want to see a, a, the Paladin offense I saw today, minus a few mistakes, show up, play against a really good Clemson defense, yes. and see what they can do. I feel like that's how you get a real sense of how good your offense is. Crusaders continue to keep it on the ground. Last uh, shutout for the Paladins, 2021 against Tennessee Tech, so it hasn't been that long. Furman's going to end up, it looks like, unless they get the ball back. 584 yards is where they're at offensively now. Mm. 266 through the air, 318 on the ground. Talk about a day, huh? Yep, 456 of that was in the first half. I can't help but uh, think about that Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins meme, talking about you like that, and yeah, talking exactly. about Coach Roper right there, you like that. So <laughs> I, know, I know fans are going to be juiced up on him, and I know they're excited to see what uh, this offense is going to be able to do once conference play rolls around. So this will be the eighth punt of the night for Miles Prosser. He's been averaging almost 45 yards per kick with a long of 57 yards. So one of the few bright spots for North Greenville this evening. Well, it always helps to have a good punter. Can't yeah. take any position for granted these days. Yeah, he's been great so far tonight. Back for the Paladins, Joshua Harris. Another good kick, really nice hang time. Harris under it. The Paladins will get to run a couple of more plays here before we call it a night from Paladin Stadium. Upcoming schedule for Furman. We've been talking about the game at Clemson. That'll be on the ACC Network a week from Saturday. Then they go on the road to ETSU at Charleston Southern and then taking on Sanford. I tell you what, right now, this is this schedule looks really, really hard if you think about it. ETSU is a really good football yes. team, no matter how you look at it. But it'll be kind of cool to see Coach Hendricks go against Coach Quarles, two guys that have played, that have coached together. All, this, all these good things go at it. Charleston Southern, that'll be a good game. And then Sanford, Sanford's been hanging in against Kennesaw State, and Kennesaw State's ranked number eight. So, to be honest, Mark, this conference may be to a point where no one's going to know who's going to win what. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of really good teams in the conference this year. I'm very excited about the 2022 season. The Paladins are going to clock this one out. Tyler Reed getting some nice carries. All this stuff pays dividends down the road for the Paladins. You're going to have injuries this year. You're going to have weird moments in games where some of these guys are going to have to step up in a very big moment late in a game, either offensively or defensively. And plays from tonight might help them gain their confidence. Paladins going to their favorite formation, the victory formation. Luke Hedrick is going to snap the ball two more times and take a knee. And we'll put this one in the books. So new jerseys and helmets. We like them. Love them. New offensive coordinator. Love them. We've been very, very pleased with what we've seen from Justin Roper tonight, the new uh, offensive coordinator from Holy Cross. Mm-hmm. 
Defense throws a shutout. Yeah. Hey. yeah. If you're a Paladin fan, there's a lot to love about tonight. It's kind of like you're just checking off everything on the list, and you're just like, well, I can go to sleep happy tonight if you're a Paladin fan. I mean, when you just look at the way this game was played, I mean, it was just executed so beautifully. I mean, yeah, there's some things that, you know, Paladins need to clean up once they go to Death Valley because you don't want to go in there and make some of the same mistakes you made today, and they may hurt you down the road. There's your old coach, Clay Hendricks. Going to go over for... The congratulatory handshake. Oh, yeah. I know Coach Hendricks is ex very, very happy about the way his quarterbacks played today. I think he's going to sleep well with a smile on his face knowing that he has two quarterbacks that can play at a high level. That's a win number 32 for Clay Hendricks as the head coach of the Furman Paladins. And the first Thursday night game ever in the history of Paladin Stadium is a success. It went perfectly tonight. Very well done. Paladins should do this more often. I kind of like the Thursday night vibe. Why not? I mean, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if next year we're, we're having the same conversation. <laughs> These two teams just 12 miles apart from one another, so you know there's a lot of Crusaders and Paladins that played together or played against one another in high school. There's so many South Carolina players on the North Greenville roster, a ton of South Carolina players on the Paladin roster as well. So a lot of friends able to spend some time with one another, shake hands after the game. And Paladins get that extra rest. And again, going to be able to spend some uh, extra, might get a day or two. Uh, Coach going to give somebody, give guys a day or two off? I, I would think Coach Henderson would be kind enough to give his guys Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. I mean, why not? These guys played their butts off today. I mean, you couldn't be more pleased as a coach seeing your guys perform with all the preparation that went into today. Well, we're going to call it a night here in Greenville, South Carolina. Fantastic defensive plays for the Paladins. All kinds of touchdowns, especially in the first half, through the air, on the ground. Tyler Huff, the new quarterback, grad transfer from Presbyterian, had himself a huge night as the Paladins start to get ready for the Clemson Tigers down in Death Valley. Cole Neely, enjoyed it tonight, man. It was fun. Hey, this is always fun working with you, Mark. Looking forward to the next time. I am Mark Childress. All games are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. 52's nothing, your final score. This has been a presentation of ESPN.